Hi, and welcome back to BSB Must Reads, where we tell you all the books you must be reading. Uh, we have one book, one author, one reading, and one mini interview. And today I have with me Anna Hartnett Reichardt. Did I pronounce all those names right? You did. You nailed it. What? That never I know. happened. It's like it's your I job. Have, <laughs> I've legit like mispronounced so many authors' names because I just you nailed them, it. And I'm like, <laughs> I should totally ask first, right? Anyway. <laughs> I'm impressed, honestly. <laughs> well, there you go. Got your score one for the interview so far. Hey, we're killing it. <laughs> um, Anna, so your new book, Catching Feelings, is book two. Correct, yes. 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 In your series. Um, so why don't, for readers who may not have read um, the first book, why don't you tell us a little bit about your series? Yeah, so the series is called the Alder series, and basically um, it kind of tracks different stories throughout the same college. Um, all the characters, the main characters in the books are going to be different each year, but there are themes and plots and cameos that run through the series as well. Um, each book can be read as a standalone, though uh, the whole experience gives you a little more to it. But um, Alder University is a fictional Catholic university in the North Georgia mountains. And uh, book one is my debut novel, Changing Majors. And that book centers around Bailey Sullivan and Noelle Parker, who are really just getting their feet under them um, and figuring out college is kind of book one. Um, and then book two is Catching Feelings. That's sophomore year. And that is between Andy, who is the catcher on the Alder Lions softball team, and Maya, who is kind of the hot-headed diva pitcher. And they have to put aside their differences and work together to, you know, bring their team home a championship. Um, but obviously there's more to it than that. The devastating attraction between the two. So it gets a little wild. <laughs> devastating attraction <laughs> I love that I, I love that you just use devastating as a good thing oh yeah right you might be the only person who could have pulled that off <laughs> uh, also I just want to point out that it's really mean that I'm doing these interviews back to back with you and Dave Patterson because you have Alder University and he has his character surname is Adler Oh no, good like, luck, Sandy. <laughs> so if I get it wrong, just forgive You're me. You're going to get tongue twisted for sure. We're just, we're just going to change it to Adler, okay? That's just going <laughs> to for both of you. It's going to be the way it is. Hey, why not Alder? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I would love to hear you read um, from Catching Feelings. And for our readers to learn a little bit more about you, if they haven't met you um, yet, which they totally should, because you're <laughs> awesome, super funny. Um, but if they haven't, tell us a little bit about you um, and you can start reading whenever you like. Yeah. I'm Anna Hartnett Reichart. Um, I am the author of the Alder series. And when I'm not writing, you can find me trying to drag my grumpy German shepherd on a walk that he definitely does not want to go on. Um, or working at the local distillery. And um, I really just love good company, good wine, good cocktails, and great books. Um, so as Sandy said, I'll be reading from book two of the Alder series, Catching Feelings. And the scene I'm going to be reading from is Maya and Andy's first time staying in a hotel room together um, after an away game. And there's a lot of uh, feelings and emotions about that. They've definitely had some moments of flirting, um, some crossing of lines, and they're kind of forced together into this intimate situation. All right. Okay, ladies, listen up. I'm going to call out names and room numbers. When you get your key, go directly to your room. Lights out by 10. Here we go. Ashlyn and Katie, 217. Kim and Taylor, 218. Andrea and Maya, 219. Maya smiles and I basically want to pass out. We grab our keys and follow our other teammates toward our block of rooms. Kim and Taylor are disappearing through their door when we reach ours. Maya swipes us in. You know Alder's mattresses are shit when those beds look like heaven, Maya chuckles. And I can't help but notice the slightly higher pitch of it, like she's nervous, which only makes me way more nervous. She drops her bag on the foot of the far bed. The hotel room is basic, but it's ours. 
I drop my bag on the other bed and my stomach swirls like the abstract art that hangs on the taupe walls. Maya squeezes my shoulder. How about you hop in the shower first? You sure? I don't mind waiting. She plucks the remote from the dresser and sits on the edge of her bed, rubbing her hand down her thigh. Positive. You're leaving a trail of dirt everywhere you walk. Okay, be out in a minute. I bring my entire bag into the bathroom instead of picking through my stuff in front of Maya. This is a whole new level of intimacy. What if my PJs are nerdy? What if I snore? I strip out of my uniform and dirt falls to the ground in clumps. It's gonna be a muddy shower. I scrub every inch of my skin until the water runs clear down my body. I finally hop out. I don't wanna keep Maya waiting, so I grab my bag and my hairbrush and vacate the bathroom. All yours, I say. Maya pull, pulls a toiletry bag from her duffel and brushes by me. You smell good, she says as she passes. When the bathroom door closes behind her, I rush to plug everything in, hearing aids, phone, laptop, take out my contacts and run a brush through my wet hair, set an alarm. I pull back the covers of my, my bed and tuck myself in. I wiggle my toes in the softness and listen to the muffled sound of water splashing against tile. When I hear the shower cut off, my heart thuds against my chest. The bathroom door creaks open and Maya emerges with a white towel wrapped around her body. She has nothing on but her chain and a soft pink colors her damp skin. The towel forms a slit with every step she takes until she reaches her bag and pulls some clothing from it. She looks at me, looking at her. You're not going to bed yet, are you? She asks. Just testing it out, so comfy. She holds up her clothes and that dimple winks at me from her grin. I'll be right back, she says. She returns in a faded t-shirt and a similar pair of boxers to mine. She pulls back her covers and sits against the headboard, patting the empty space next to her. Wanna hang for a bit, she asks. She doesn't have to ask me twice. I hop out of my bed and slide into hers. My body heats from the intimacy, from the warmth of her shower radiating off her skin, from my own nervous system going completely bonkers. I don't know what to do with my arms when my feet begin to sweat. Feels so good to be clean. I hate when we can't shower after a game, she says. Yeah, I'd say more, but my mind is currently focused on not combusting. And then I see it. Something about the glow from the TV and the damp of her skin illuminates a scar on the inside of her left wrist. Without thinking twice, I pull her hand into my lap and turn it over. What's this? I ask. I broke my wrist senior year of high school. I was running in one of the trails by our house, tripped on a route, and boom. I find any excuse to keep my hands on her. I don't touch the scar, but I spread her long fingers and push at her palm, as if this is all part of my observation of her past injury. And you need a surgery? She leans towards me and looks at her wrist. Yeah, there's a plate and some screws in there somewhere. I freeze. Whoops. One too many pages. I was lucky it wasn't my pitching hand, but UGA still passed on me because of it. I stopped prodding your hand and just hold it. They passed on you because of your injury? It's not even your pitching hand and recovery couldn't have taken that long. Trust me, I know, I was so pissed. Actually, I feel like it's only recently that I've stopped being so angry. I mean, not at UGA, I don't blame them, but still, the anger. I felt like my dream was stolen from me when I was so close. So you went to Alder instead, I say. So I went to Alder. I'm sure you could tell that I held on to some of that anger, but I knew I'd get a lot of playing time here and the team has potential. It could have been worse, she says. Her hand turns over and we interlace our fingers. I stroke her thumb while my skin buzzes. I am officially holding Maya's hand. Me too. Even if you did hate me at first, I said. She squeezes my hand. Enough with that. I've never hated you, Andy. I mean, I don't blame you for thinking that. She looks at her lap. I just don't think, I just hope you don't think that about me now. I turn her hand over in my lap and look at her scar, my fingers brushing the tight pale tissue of it. Then I look at her. I think a lot about you now, but I don't think that. She holds my eye contact as she sways towards me. My phone dings from the nightstand and breaks our trance. I ignore it. You should get that if you want, she says, as she pulls back like nothing was about to happen. It's just Instagram. Instagram, huh? I bet it's Trin Trinity. Let's look, she says. Maya slides out of bed and unplugs my phone. You're right, I say, and hand her back the phone. The message reads, well, maybe in the off season, you'd let me make it up to you. Alder isn't too far away. 
Maya reads it out loud, her mouth in a big O, like she just heard the juiciest bit of gossip. Oh shit, she is asking you out. What do you think? Is she cute? I'm not sure how to respond. She's beautiful, but right now I'm only interested in the girl who's next to me holding my phone. But I guess we're both supposed to pretend we don't know that. Cute enough, I guess, I say. Okay, I'm writing her back, Maya says. Dear Trinity, I'm flattered. Unfortunately, the picture on my team is super hot and Maya, give that back. I stretch for my phone, but she yanks it out of reach. And I'd rather have her, she says, as she waves my phone over the nightstand. My, what, you don't like it? She asks, holding me in place with her other arm, a bar across my chest. I guess you'll have to do something about it, Foster. So I do. I knock her arm away and swing into her lap with such momentum, I almost fall past her off the bed. But I catch myself and lunge for my phone. Only, my lunge isn't very much like a lunge at all. With my aside in between mine, I have effectively humped her. I freeze. Everything grinds to a deafening stop as we stare at each other, her eyes blazing into mine, my fingers resting at her waistband. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I can't decide if it's like super sexy or like kind of cringy or <laughs> it's everything. It's so Perfect. cringe, right? <laughs> but like, yeah. All the oh, things. Love it. Um, so I do have a question. Burning question. Um, where are Andy's clothes? <laughs> she was in the shower and then she was out of like like she I'm gonna say her naked no throughout all of this. Did Take I get it wrong? On. <laughs> what? <laughs> she got dressed in a flash. <laughs> totally, totally naked. That that's where I was. <laughs> No. That would have okay. really uh, spiced things up pretty quickly. <laughs> right? <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, so this book is a lot about softball. Yeah. Um, which has been getting, it's just, I feel like is the quintessential sapphic sport, right? Totally, totally. Uh, at least in America. And has been getting a lot of play, haha, on, you know, TV and whatnot <laughs> um, right now. I mean, obviously you knew that, right? When you wrote the book and you timed it. So that <laughs> would, no. I wish I, I love that it came out with um, a league of their own, but like that was just so lucky that it kind of <laughs> just wound up perfectly together like that. Um, but yeah, softball is just gaining so much steam and it's just such a great fun sport. And the viewership of the college softball world series far exceeds the baseball world series. So yeah. that just speaks to the game and the, the energy that it brings. And I definitely love softball season and watching all the teams get out there. Uh, Auburn fan, go Auburn Tigers. <laughs> For sure. So what do you think it is about sports and about teams that make such great stories? Oh man. I mean, there's just all, I mean, if we've, if you've been on a team, we all know that like, there's just this already built in tension. There are so many rela relationships um, layering on top of each other and so much time that you have to spend together working towards a common goal um, with all of these different personalities and uh, storylines happening because there's different people and um, Austin you could find some love in there, especially on a softball team. <laughs> yeah, for sure, right? <laughs> um, so I feel like there's a little bit of everything in this book, um, including, you know, nudity that may or may not be nudity, which may all be in my head, who knows? Um, but we have a little bit of a rival's trope, a little bit of an opposite's trope. You have the sports in there. You have kind of like a stuck together trope a little bit. Yeah. Um, but these two characters, at least at the start, really kind of think they do or think they should despise each other, right? Um, and I don't want to give too much of the book away, um, but ultimately, what do you think it is that actually brings them together, that takes them from that place of like being rivals to, um, to kind of the, the part where you read where it's like, no, I really, you know, I don't hate you. I never did. Um, what is it that brings them together? Yeah, I think honestly, like a lot of frustration 
because you they're both so stuck in how they feel about each other initially which is like very far apart and cold but they both get so frustrated with not being able to do their jobs that something has to give at some point and I think the first scene where that happens Andy helps Maya study for her chemistry exam um, instead of doing a team building activity and just having them both kind of take down the wall just an inch it all just kind of goes after that builds yeah. up after that so definitely just getting to the point where you're so frustrated you'll try anything including being nice <laughs> um and what? You, right. yeah right it's Who's so nice? <laughs> uh so that was definitely the beginning of the thaw Sure. So, I mean, they have a common goal, right? They're on this totally. team. They both, yeah, they both want to be, um, you know, good for their team and do their best. And in order to do that, they, you know, quite unfortunately must be nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. And maybe, you know, maybe fall in love. Who knows? I guess we should all try and see what happens. Exactly. <laughs> um, so this is book two. Tell me what's up next for the Adler <laughs> All day. <laughs> no. Never I right. knew it. <laughs> it was bound to happen. Totally. Uh, so what's up next is junior year. Also, all of these characters are in the same cohort of age. So um, they'll all graduate together, which I'm very excited for. But junior year um, is going to be based around Maggie Hyde, who is um, her family owns one of the largest apple orchards in North Georgia and helped establish the ag department at Alder <laughs> University. Um, and she has some pretty rooted ideals and opinions about the world and is quickly challenged by a new student in her class, um, Olivia Cypress, who really just pokes her in the ribs and turns her world upside down. Um, it's a pretty fun one. <laughs> cool. Well, that's yeah. exciting. Um, yeah. And a little bit of a change of pace too, from, from softball to. A <laughs> little bit of everything. Got it. Got to taste all the college stories, I guess. <laughs> I but that it. one also has, um, uh, more, more cameos from the first book, Changing Majors and oh. kind of keeps carrying on the storylines. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Anna. Um, please do check out Catching Feelings, available from the Bold Strokes Books web store right now and everywhere books are sold September 13th. Thanks so awesome. much, Anna. Thanks, Sandy.